Hello, everyone, and welcome to the weekly MMA Cycles Market Update. This is Gianni DePoche, and it is great, as always, to be with you all. We saw some pretty notable moves in many markets this past week. Uh, per usual, the geocosmics were very exciting. We had uh, a conjunction between Mars and Saturn unfold on April 4th, and then we had uh, Venus ingress into the sign of Pisces on uh, April 5th. So let's take a look at a few charts here and see how uh, those transits impacted uh, markets um, and also talk about the widely anticipated uh, Jupiter-Neptune conjunction that's finally set to occur uh, next week on uh, April 12th. So uh, the Dow Jones uh, was up on Friday, but all major equity industries finished lower on the week. The Dow held up the best. The NASDAQ was down the most. So uh, the NASDAQ uh, came off a low that formed a midweek on uh, Thursday but still could not eke out a positive return uh, on the week, uh, but still well off the lows of the uh, that formed back in February, uh, still has some work to do before uh, it gets back to its new uh, to its former all time high. But overall, uh, not not a bad week uh, in hindsight. Let's go ahead and look at the Nasdaq. Uh, shares of the NASDAQ closed out near the lows of the week, which is typically considered to be bearish price action. And uh, from a geocosmic standpoint, the uh, the transit that we are looking at when it comes to technologies under performance uh, this year is Saturn and Aquarius because uh, Aquarius rules tech stocks and NASDAQ is largely comprised of tech stocks. And Saturn has a tendency to uh, depress or uh, lower the, the prices of the stocks and sectors uh, in the sign that it's in. So if Saturn is in Aquarius, we would look for uh, shares of technology or Aqu Aquarius related uh, stocks and sectors to be uh, depressed. And that's what we're seeing, uh, which is a stark contrast from what we saw uh, in the last decade or so. You know, the NASDAQ outperformed uh, the rest of the market and especially technology outperformed for such uh, an extended period of time. But that's that's reversed this year. You know, the inflation trade uh, has worked much better. And that has a lot to do uh, with, you know, Jupiter uh, being in the sign of Pisces and you know, the whole uh, in inflation uh, hysteria as well. So uh, speaking of which, the next stock, uh, or the next market rather, I want to look at is crude oil because crude oil uh, also was down on the week, but it did uh, rally off a low that formed on Thursday. And now that we have uh, the widely anticipated Jupiter-Neptune conjunction uh, unfolding on Tuesday next week of uh, April 12th, all uh, markets that are related to inflation, but and crude oil is the primary uh, driver of inflation expectations in markets are uh, center focused. So we see the themes of Jupiter conjunct Neptune permeating across the economy. You know, we have inflation data at multi decade highs, we have consumer confidence uh, at multi year lows stemming from inflation. That is the primary concern uh, for many in the economy, and it is now the primary concern for the Federal Reserve and the central banks. They are ready to start uh, raising rates by increment of 50 basis points uh, starting in May, which is really uh, notable because coming out of quantitative easing in the 2010s, the most they ever rose interest rates was 25 basis points. But now that inflation is at its highest level in uh, over 40 years, they are willing to sacrifice economic growth to get inflation under control uh, because it is very unpopular, uh, both politically and economically. Uh, and it's unsustainable in the long run. But uh, as we mentioned with, with Ray last week, the cure for high prices is high prices. At some point, um, inflation will start to uh, naturally reduce economic growth as consumers are forced to cut back on um, you know, consumer discretionary goods, marginal demand will be impacted. So uh, all eyes are on crude oil next week. Uh, we will be coming out with the MMA cycles report uh, on uh, April 11th. So would encourage you to check that out because we're going to be giving our monthly update for crude oil in that. Uh, and it's a very important market at the center of, you know, much of the center of much of what's going on uh, in today's world, uh, not just in the economy, uh, with respect to inflation expectations, uh, but when it comes to the geopolitical situation uh, in uh, you know Ukraine and other parts of the world as well, so uh, you know when we look at uh, what unfolded this past week, you know Venus entered uh, the picture of uh, Pisces as well. So we have uh, 
uh, Venus uh, and Mars next week. And we have Jupiter and Neptune all in the sign of Pisces, uh, you know, starting next week. So there's, there's going to be a lot of uh, focus and attention on crude oil. And what I particularly like um, about uh, Mars going into the sign of Pisces is, you know, Mars is a very uh, strong, high energy, fiery planet. And now that it's going into Pisces, uh, I would liken it to lighting a fire under uh, oil, right? And so what happens when you add fire to oil? There's an explosion. And whether that happens uh, upwards or downwards remains to be seen, but we will be giving our more detailed thoughts on that in the MMA cycles report and even the uh, weekly MMA report. Uh, uh, cycles, uh, the weekly report that comes out uh, every weekend as well. Uh, a couple other markets that I wanted to look at, uh, we can look at uh, uh, natural gas too, because natural gas, even though crude oil uh, has been correcting from its uh, multi-year high, natural gas continued its rally uh, and it's rallying into the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction. So uh, makes one wonder, you know, does this rally pause or go sideways? It's clearly in a bull trend, making higher highs and higher lows. Uh, but natural gas, you know, kind of piggybacking uh, off of the uh, the crude oil rally and uh, also driving inflation expectations to multi-year highs. Uh, I want to look at Bitcoin real quick uh, this week because we are coming down from the year's highs. Still some uh, technical issues that need to be worked out in this. We won't talk about that uh, today, but if you want to learn more about what's going on uh, on a technical basis, you can look at the MMA crypto reports. But you know, geocosmically, the big picture for cryptocurrencies remains the Uranus transit through the sign of Taurus. And, you know, we know about the boom bust cycles that typically uh, unfold uh, when Uranus is going through a sign in those uh, sectors ruled by that sign. So we've seen tremendous innovation and revolutions uh, in currency, uh, currencies and in financial markets. Uh, but crypto is still struggling uh, to regain its uh, bullish impetus that it had uh, very nicely uh, in the last two years. So uh, Bitcoin still some issues work uh, to be worked out, but uh, it is, you know, it did just form a new uh, yearly high uh, last week uh, or yeah, a couple of weeks ago. I also want to uh, take a quick look at precious metals, uh, specifically gold, because uh, gold has been consolidating uh, and hanging out not far from its multi uh, multi-month highs here. Uh, but this is another market to watch, especially with the uh, Jupiter-Neptune conjunction, because um, gold is not always an inflationary hedge, but it's a hedge against uncertainty, economic uncertainty and geopolitical uncertainty. And there is no shortage of either of those uh, in this world right now. So, um, you know, whether this becomes another inflationary trade due to the uh, Jupiter-Neptune conjunction, we will probably know more by next week. So we we'll definitely uh, uh, keep an eye on what's going on in the precious metals complex as well, uh, because we know that they can start to accelerate uh, either to the upside or the downside. You know, if the Fed gets uh, very aggressive on their rate hikes, precious metals might not like that. But if inflation starts to get on, out of control, uh, it could be a good uh, environment for precious metals. So that's all the time that I had uh, with you this week. I hope you enjoyed the video. I want to again remind you that the MMA Cycles Report will be published uh, on April 11th and April 12th. Uh, you can find that at www.mmacycles.com. And then I uh, also want to remind you that uh, on May 8th, there will be the MMA uh, Market Update webinar. That's part two, uh, and that will feature Ray Merriman, Ray Merriman, Ulrich Aspergen, and myself, we will be uh, analyzing and update, updating a variety of markets. So uh, that's all we had for this week. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and we will catch you next time. Thank you.